Let's talk about APIs in this video. This is gonna be a long one, so sit back and let me show you what is going on in the Twitter world, in the Reddit world, all of these places, and why this is a huge concern that APIs are getting extremely costly for these social media platforms. So of course, all of us know Twitter. If you don't, I'm just gonna give you a short introduction about the social media platform. It was acquired by Elon Musk last year, and since then, there have been a lot of changes on this platform, including one which people, which developers mostly do not like at all, and that is the hefty cost of APIs. API access. Now let's get into a little bit about what this API exactly is, why this is costly, and why did Elon Musk choose to make this as a very expensive offering. So you see, traditionally, the way web works is that you have a website like twitter.com, you open the website as a user, you browse the feed, you know, you maybe follow a few people, you tweet something, and that's it. That's your day, right? You spent an hour or so on the website, and that's it. Now consider a platform like a business, maybe, who wants to automate some of these things, or who wants to, you know, just crunch numbers on what their best performing tweet is. One way, of course, is that they can hire someone which does the exact same thing like a human. They open twitter.com, they, you know, go to the account, they see what tweet is best performing, they manually just see every single tweet for hundreds of thousands of minutes, you know, and just maintain an Excel sheet and then sort it accordingly. That's the boring way. The simpler and a faster way is that you get an access to a data set, which is pure, right? So if I'm a developer, I'm a company owner, I don't need to see all the UI of Twitter. I don't need to see recommended followers. I don't need to see what my follower count is. I don't need that fancy UI. I just need simple, straightforward data. And extracting that data out in a meaningful format, which can be then, you know, programmed and it can be accessed in any way, that is what an API enables, right? So under the hood, the difference between an actual platform like Twitter.com versus an API, which is provided by Twitter, is that API is extremely low noise, extremely low noise, which means that you only get what you need in a structured format and you don't have to spend time, you know, doing manual data parsing or anything. It's return in a structured data like JSON or XML. Well, XML is for dinosaurs, but JSON is the most popular output format out there. And you use this data and you do whatever business logic you have to do. Now, before Musk, this was something which was freely available, almost freely, right? So for a huge amount of limit, this was like, you did not have to pay anything. I don't know the exact numbers, but it was pretty huge because I have not seen any sort of pricing structure on Twitter before this, on the API front. But what happened eventually is now, the Twitter API version two, which is what they are calling the new version of the API, includes a bunch of tiers. Now this tiers, of course, has a free tier. It also has a basic tier, which starts at $100 per month. This gap in itself is a huge gap, right? So free, of course, exists, but Something which requires, you know, me to access any sort of paid feature or anything, maybe create two app IDs, maybe create something that just requires me to pay $100 a month now, which again is not a big issue for even small to medium sized startup. $100 is not a lot of money for corporates or startups, but it's, it is a lot of money if you are hacking a side project or, you know, if you just want to try out something, that's just $100 a month every single month. The next thing, which is pro, takes it 50 times more expensive, which is $5,000 per month. Now, this is a range which even small to mid-sized startups would not afford until your core offering somehow is Twitter, like, you know, some level of automation software or that is your SaaS product. It makes no sense for a regular startup if they want, let's say, three app IDs. I don't know, like, whatever their use case is, to pay $5,000 a month. And then for enterprises, I mean, I have seen numbers as high as $40,000, $50,000 a month. Twitter can offer you as high as, you know, 10x the price of the pro level. All right, let's talk about APIs a little bit again, because this gives you the idea of pricing, but this doesn't tell you that actually deserves that rate or, you know, if we talk about API itself, what is the actual cost which Twitter is getting and what is add-on cost on top of that? Maybe this rate is justified, right? Maybe compute is expensive. Let's figure out. So to figure this out on a numeric scale, one way to go about is look at popular cloud providers like AWS. Now, this is an extremely rough and unfair comparison, but hold on with me. AWS Lambda is a service by AWS which executes any sort of code you provide on demand, and it is an expensive service if you compare it with something like EC2 at a scale of Twitter. So let me just back off a little bit and tell you a little bit more about the full context. When you're talking about a lot of requests, like billions, tens of billions, hundreds of billions, trillions of requests a month, AWS Lambda has a tipping point over EC2 compute. So until some point it is cheap, it is extremely cheap to run AWS Lambda as a service, but beyond that, EC2 becomes a viable option compute wise. But let's just stick with AWS Lambda for the sake of some simplicity because it provides you billing option on per request basis on one single request how long it has been executing how many resources you want to allocate it for all of that so let's take a look at what exactly is aws lambda's pricing so you see for every GB second, which is basically saying that if you allocate one gigabyte of RAM to your AWS Lambda instance, for every single second it is executing, 
you are charged this much amount, which is basically nothing, right? If you look at this amount, it has more zeros than the numbers it has. So it's basically nothing. And let's do a little bit of computation because this nothing actually becomes a lot when you're talking at a scale of product. So let's, let's stick to that. So this is the execution cost of AWS Lambda and it costs 20 cents for 1 million requests for AWS Lambda, right? So that is also a cost factor. There are additional costs like data transfer and everything, but for the sake of simplicity, let's inflate these few costs a little bit and let's consider them to cover, you know, a miscellaneous cost of 10 cents or 5 cents for 1 million requests, which should cover like other add-on costs. So let's get an idea of how much does it cost for a product like Twitter to exist. So let's do some maths on basic plan. So it says that you can have 3,000 tweets per month posting limit at the user level, 50,000 tweets per month posting limit at the app level. So I can post 50,000 tweets and I can read 10,000 tweets. So that's close to like 60,000 calls, API calls a month I can make. Let's double that for the sake of, you know, just accounting for more things that you would might you might need to do more calls on authorization and everything. So that's like 120,000 calls let's say maximum I can make on this basic plan. Again, we are doing a very rough calculation. So stick with me here. So you see, I have done a little bit of breakdown here. It's not a lot, but it's honest work. But you can see that I have API calls, cost per call, which is just taking up values from AWS Lambda. Again, these are high values. So Twitter probably pays a lot less than this because at the scale they are operating. But let's calculate total cost now. Let's try to figure out what will be the cost. So it'll be a cost of single execution times total number of cost plus cost per call times total number of cost, which is $10, right? So $10 is the amount of bill Twitter will pay on these $100 per month subscription when you max out every single request they provide, every single API thing. You double that. So remember, it was 60,000. We doubled it to 120K to accommodate any sort of additional charge on data transfer and anything. And if you want, I mean, this again does not include the database cost because it's also querying the database. It's not just an API level thing. So just, just for the sake of it, if we double this number as well, it would be only $20, right? That means the max Twitter has to spend for every single client on this basic plan is $20. And mind you that 99% of users will never hit $20, let alone $10 or even $5. It will probably stay in because this is already doubled. So the max actually like theoretically is $5, but it will probably stay a lot, lot less than that, close to $2 or $1. So realistically, the plan price for basic is 100 times more expensive than what it costs Twitter on an infrastructure level itself. But even if you max it out, it's still like five times to 10 times more expensive than what it needs. So what does that mean? That means that the only thing this API is costing you is for the data, nothing else. The data and the convenience. Now, I haven't looked into Twitter exclusively, the web platform and the mobile platform, but I'm pretty sure that the web platform if not on the basic plan, lies somewhere between free and basic, right? Because there could certainly be people who are doing more than 1500 tweets a month. That's like 50 tweets a day. I mean, the power users of Twitter who are just, you know, posting everything, every single thing of their life happening on Twitter, they would most certainly run into 1500 tweets a month, even through the app. So they have to keep those limits above. So that means it's more than free plan, but it's maybe it's probably less than basic or even more than basic for some features. But what I want to say is that Twitter's web client or Twitter's mobile application client is not falling in these API zones, right? Now, of course, with plans like these, Twitter will discourage a lot of people who just used to spam on Twitter or who just used to, you know, just create any sort of content, any sort of things to reduce the number of API calls and thus saving the cost. But on the other hand, it is also allowing people to come up with scraping solutions, which in my opinion, and as a matter of experience as well, is far more expensive than an API call. So when you start scraping a platform, you are not only just rendering the data, which like API also does, but you're also server side generating the whole thing, or you know, just making multiple API calls, getting so much more data, maybe getting images, maybe getting fonts, this and that. So if I'm loading my profile to check my followers via twitter.com slash meholmpt, and if I see that, versus if I do it via an API, it's almost like, I mean, the numbers will be same, but API call it to be so less that you will not even feel it. But again, we are talking about grand scale. Now you have to handle the web scrapers and these sort of people who are now using automation like Puppeter, for example. Now, again, something like this is also solvable, but I mean, this, this is a cat and mouse fight because the more guards Twitter introduces, the harder it is for users also to use the platform. If you are putting Kafka on every single page, that's not a solution. Plus, there are AI tools now that can bypass Kafka, and it's just a matter of comparing cost. And I'm pretty sure like an AI tool would probably 
cost much less than five thousand dollars a month to bypass you know multiple captchas which is like some level of set captchas on every single point it doesn't end here because other platforms like reddit for example are following into twitter's steps reddit has been in discussions of making its own api paid as well so you see reddit has a charge of you know discussion charge of twelve thousand dollars for 50 million api requests which again by standards is let's see how much it's 240 dollars for a 1 million API request, whereas AWS is 20 cents for 1 million API request. So that's like, that's over a thousand times expensive than raw API requests through AWS Lambda.